So part one, overview of IP. IP classically is, is really four different rights. You've got trademarks, this is a, a source of goods or services. This is really your brands, okay? It's your brand protection. It's a word, a logo, or what have you. Copyrights, I put here creative works, but the, the legal definition is, is uh, a work of authorship fixed in a tangible medium of expression. That sounds very fancy, but it's art, songs, words, software, software code, user interfaces, your websites, any, your marketing materials, the things that you express uh, to the world, uh, either in, in, in software form or, or, or other, other mechanisms. Trade secrets, valuable secrets. The, their value is de derived by them not being generally known and you actually taking steps to keep them secret. That's an important piece. This is generally the definition that holds across the country, but more or less, You've, it's got to be valuable because it's not known, and you want to protect it. If you distribute information you know, publicly through social media outlets, you're not maintaining that as a secret, okay? If you have a manufacturing plant and you're not limiting access to important parts or not requiring a non-disclosure agreement before your visitors see your manufacturing plant, that's not taking reasonable steps to protect a secret, okay? So trade secrets, patents. I put products, processes, devices. This is really you know, protecting structure and function of, of what inventors are, are developing. Uh, it could be, of course, pharma products, compositions, medical devices. Uh, it ranges to the diagnostic space, to, to implants, and, and what have you. 20 years from filing is how long patents last. So let's dig a little bit more into, into patents. Really important concept to understand for patents. They're exclusionary rights. All right, when you get a granted U.S. patent, it gives the owner the right to prevent others from doing all these things in the United States, important here, as claimed in the patent, all right? So an exclusionary right. I like to use the, the, the one acre example. Let's say I have one acre in Chester County, Pennsylvania, which is where I came from. Um, I have the right to charge you for coming onto my one acre, all right? Same thing, what a patent does. What a patent doesn't give me is the right to maybe go on Joe Haig's one acre in San Diego, all right? So owning a patent doesn't necessarily give you the right to infringe other people's patents. Important distinction. We'll explore that a little bit more in a bit. And again, important here, the right, the patent is given in exchange for information. Who here has, has had the pleasure of reading patents and patent documents? Okay. So they're long, they're dense, some of them could be, some of them could be vaguely written, but that part of that, that, that the disclosure is, is, is the result of, of, of having to tell the world about your invention, how to make it, how to use it, uh, and how it might work in a certain setting. The most important thing you've ever read in a patent are you know, the claims at the end, okay? It's the numbered sentences, this is an example of one, at the end of the patent. The name of the game is the claim. If there's anything else you, you, you read, please read the claims at the end of the patents. That is where the rights are. That defines the scope of the rights. Uh, important here is valid claims. It's an important concept. Valid claims are novel and non-obvious over the prior art. Joe mentioned a, a, you know, a good point. What is prior art? Okay, really it means everything that has come before the time that you filed for your patent. Typically publications, prior U.S. patents, U.S. patent applications, journal articles, uh, articles that perhaps professors, you know, write and publish. That's all prior art. Could it be disseminating your product on a Kickstarter campaign? Well, yeah. One type of prior art is prior sales. So if you sell your invention before you file for a patent, you're foregoing those patent rights. Not such an issue in the medical device concept, context when you have an implantable because you have to go through some market approval, but it's important to know. You can offer your product for sale and that will start a time, a time period. But the, the key thing here in a patent is the claim. They define the scope of the rights. This will be important later. So in, in the medical device con context, and, and my position and, and outlook is your patents should cover, and what I mean there, and when you hear something or somebody say patents cover, 
what they really mean is claim different aspects of the value chain in, in, in your particular setting. Um, the other thing that we should think about as we go through this talk is medical device companies, they should utilize the U.S. patent system to address competitive threats. I put here continuation applications because it's one area that I see other companies sort of miss the boat sometimes and some companies do it right. We'll talk about continuation applications a bit more.